The last few weeks have been rough for the champions of diversity, equity and inclusion in entertainment. In filmed entertainment, the oh-so-virtuous acolyte was cancelled, while in the realm of gaming, Star Wars Outlaws is underperforming big time. Dustborn has never been played by more than tens of people at the same time, worldwide, while Concord is getting willowed, pulled from the market, with refunds offered to the very few who ever bought it. Literally hundreds of millions of dollars were poured into making these, all in the name of including a modern audience that never showed up. Because they don't exist. Let's dive in. This video is sponsored by Black Forest Supplements. We'll explore the history of entertainment soon here, to see how insane trying to win over a modern audience always was, but to quickly get up to speed. Hollywood and gaming have both been trying to appeal to the modern audience for nigh on a decade now. Whoever convinced them that this was the way to go must have convinced everyone else as well, because around the same time, every major corporation everywhere started promoting selfishness, overindulgence, unhealthy lifestyles, anti-social values, and role models that embodied all of these. In the process, tacitly encouraging everyone to let themselves go, instead of keeping mentally and physically fit and healthy, which has made ever more difficult to do. One of the many examples that spring to mind here is the FDA's attempt at taking away NMN, which happens to be Black Forest's star offering. Not because it doesn't work, mind you, quite the contrary, because it works all too well, so much so in fact that they're trying to reclassify this natural supplement as a performance-enhancing drug. You see, NMN is vital for the functioning of the 37 trillion cells in your body. A study by Harvard claims that NMN can help reduce weight, cholesterol, and even blood pressure in overweight adults. Meaning, it not only slows down, but can functionally reverse aging. I've been taking it for several months now myself, and I can vouch for the positive benefits, as I run faster, lift heavier, punch harder, and have more excess energy to create videos for you all, and I want you to experience these gains as well. So since Black Forest sponsors this video for the next 48 hours, you can buy two and get one for free, so you can stock up now while you still can. Link is in the description. With that said, let's move on to the cost of catering to this modern audience. The rationalization for going all in on the modern audience was the notion that there was this huge untapped market of women and underrepresented groups that could be included, if only the product was changed so that they would feel safe, seen and welcomed. And according to Microsoft's own numbers, this potential market numbers 3 billion strong, as we saw in our video detailing how Xbox mandated policies which necessitated the services of companies like Sweet Baby Inc. Alas, while they were meant to make games inclusive and welcoming, they have instead proven to be the kiss of death for any game. Like Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, a game which lost Warner 200 million and which directly caused developer Rocksteady to be decimated. Looks like that estimate of a new market of 3 billion may have been something of a miscalculation there. Now, to be clear, I'm obviously exaggerating when I say this modern audience doesn't exist. But if we are rounding out the numbers, then rounding down to zero would be more accurate than rounding up to 3 billion. Case in point, no new audience, modern or otherwise, were interested in either Dustborn or Concord, no matter how safe and welcoming they were. In the developers' efforts at being inclusive towards a modern audience, they instead excluded the existing market and the actual audience. Whenever you include someone, then intentionally or unintentionally, you exclude someone else. 
This is true across the board, and especially for the major entertainment franchises that have been going strong for decade after decade, that sometimes as many as four generations may have grown up with. Yet in the quest of including the imaginary modern audience, they've excluded their built-in and extant audience. Doctor Who has waxed and waned in popularity over the years, but it was nearly at its height when the BBC decided to be more inclusive, at which point its popularity nosedived. They responded by pandering to the modern audience even harder, at which point viewership fell off a cliff, and now cancellation is looking more and more likely. Star Trek was always inclusive, but since including the modern audience, the viewership has all but disappeared, as they excluded everyone else. Star Trek was always niche though. Star Wars and Marvel weren't. They've both been the biggest entertainment brands on the planet, always appealing to fans of both genders in every nation and in every culture. Yet they were all equally excluded by Disney's attempts at winning over the modern audience. After the fluke and brief return to form that was Deadpool and Wolverine, the people behind the next MCU outing, Agatha all along, revealed no lessons had been learned, bragging to Total Film that they're going to great lengths to include the attendees of One Division themed drag brunches, but without questioning if maybe tailoring the entire series to the extreme minority within minorities, who chooses to attend One Division themed drag brunches might exclude more than they include and by orders of magnitude at that. Even the otherwise deranged Paul Tassi over at Forbes was able to recognize that this series is appealing to no one. Yet in a sense, it's only doing what everyone in entertainment has been doing for years now. And then they act surprised when their inclusive programming for the modern audience fails miserably, destroying universally beloved brands in the process. They have an excuse at hand though. The belief was crystal clear. If they just changed their products to be more inclusive, the modern audience would flock in. Except that never happened. Instead, their existing audience fled in droves. And the most telling rationalization of why this might have happened actually comes from Disney. Last year, they filed a 10k form with the Securities and Exchange Commission, in which they admit an operational risk due to their messaging. A great write-up from That Park Place summarizes the filing. One of the bullet points in this section states, We face risks relating to misalignment with public and consumer tastes and preferences for entertainment, travel and consumer products, which impact demand for our entertainment offerings and products and the profitability of any of our businesses. Underneath the bullet point, the company states, Our business create entertainment, travel and consumer products whose success depends substantially on consumer tastes and preferences that change in often unpredictable ways. So they blame the audience because as they claim, consumer tastes and preferences can change in often unpredictable ways. Except they don't. Everyone that has ever tried to appeal to the modern audience has failed. We're talking a 100% failure rate here. Meaning anyone that keeps on trying are plainly insane. That would be because the modern audience, for all intents and purposes, doesn't exist. It never did, and it never will. And contrary to what Disney is trying to tell the Securities and Exchange Commission to excuse their own failures, consumer tastes and preferences never changed either. The only thing that changed was Disney's output, and it changed away from consumer tastes and preferences, which remained fixed as they're derived from human nature. Like fashion or music, the exact form may have evolved with the times, but the fundamentals have never changed. From the Epic of Gilgamesh, the oldest fully realized tale in recorded history, up until the height of the MCU, 
the biggest and most wide-reaching entertainment franchise ever. Some things have remained constant, even over thousands upon thousands of years of history. Most notable among them is the tales of men that had to overcome their own shortcomings and better themselves, and in the process, through their own sacrifice, help the larger community around them, are both engrossing and inspirational. Such stories kept the children captivated around the campfires when man still lived in caves, encouraging them to be the best they could be. And just five short years ago, audiences across the world, irrespective of language, culture or ethnicity, flocked to see the conclusion of the Avenger saga in theaters, which while draped in a contemporary wrapping, still told timeless tales of heroism and sacrifice. But in the few short years since then, Hollywood, seemingly out of nowhere, were convinced that this kind of aspirational storytelling was old-fashioned and redundant, and that the modern audience, for the first time in the history of humanity, demanded something fundamentally different. You see how insane that is? And there was no data to suggest that audiences wanted anything different. I mean, it's not like The Dark Knight, or Iron Man, or Captain America flopped or anything. No, the only ones demanding anything different were select money people behind the scenes and in public, screeching beached whales with artificial hair colors that in nature signals danger. That's who they listened to though, and ever since, entertainment has mostly been about including a hypothetical modern audience that wants to see themselves represented on screen, and who wants to be affirmed in how perfect and how right they were all along, while yesterday's heroes, the ones the actual audience always responded to, had to be emasculated and taken down a few pegs for their patriarchal and triggering ways. The extant audience never asked for this and increasingly are staying away, while funnily enough, the modern audience that were supposed to show up never did. No wonder, then, that all the products made for this non-existent audience keeps on failing. Until the powers that be reach the point where they can't afford this madness any longer, it just might continue, though. So remember to take care of yourself and your own well-being, even if corporate entertainments are promoting role models that don't. To help you out, remember to stock up on NMN before it is reclassified as a drug, because it is that efficient. Use the link in the description or pinned comment, where for the next 48 hours you can buy two and get one for free. Now, let me know your thoughts on all of this in the comments.